Hey guys, welcome back to another redstone video. Today I want to show you a compact fully automatic lock generator. That's something we couldn't do before, because in order to generate locks you always needed a player that places saplings. And with the addition of new 1.60 mechanics we can now finally get rid of the player placing down saplings. In this case it wouldn't work for all the lock types, only of course for the new 1.16 trees that are based on fungus growth. So using the mechanic we can bone mill nylium to get a fungus and then bone mill that fungus we can generate locks without the player doing anything. Alright, so the machine I got here is quite compact. You can probably make it even more compact by running everything on the clock, but I try to make a smart system. So the way it works is we bone mill the nylium here first using this dispenser, then a second dispenser tries to bone mill the potential fungus. In most of the cases we actually get either a different nether plant, so nether sprout or some roots, or actually a fungus that we can't bone mill since it's a crimson fungus on a warped nylium or vice versa. Um, but in case we do get a fungus, then this dispenser here would bone mill it and then the fill level goes down one. So the comparator here in the back would drop down the signal strength 14 and then the sticky piston here would retract again and we make an observer clock using those two observers and this block here also goes up. So the observer clock then keeps activating the dispenser until the fungus has grown into a tree. Then we detect the tree growth using the comparator here. So we detect the fill level of the dispenser through the lock and then we activate this tower of pistons. So in case all the locks get pushed out, the whole process needs to start again. That's why we actually detect the bottom piston here using the observer and yeah, here just have a T flip flop circuit that starts it again. So we power this block here, there's some redstone dust on top, the dispenser here gets powered again and the second one as well and so on. But what happens in case we don't get a fungus? In that case we have another redstone dust line that tries to power this block here. In case we do get a fungus this is pulled up, so this, the signal goes nowhere. In case we don't get a fungus, then this rail here in the back gets powered and we power the bottom piston to yeah, punch out the nether plants there. Because if there's some other plants on top of this block, then obviously if you keep bone milling that, nothing would happen. All right, what also happens, of course, is we activate the piston here, the bottom one, and then we take that again and start the cycle again. All right. I think I explained it almost all. Let's start the circuit. And yeah, there's also a specialty. The nether plants or the roots, what we mostly get here, can also be composted. So in most cases we actually have a block here and, and most of them just get picked up by the hopper here on the side. And some of those nether plants yeah, could be turned back into bone meal. And we just got the first warp fungus so we grow, can grow into a tree. We need a bit of delay here, otherwise we could get a double pulse, that's why we got the Fortic, uh, Fortic repeater here. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for the second fungus to generate. Usually it takes about 10 to 15 attempts to get one, and there we go, we have the second tree. Alright, so this machine will just keep doing this. Obviously you need to get rid of the, the locks or the blocks somehow, so that I could either use a wizard system, a TNT blast chamber, etc. Um, but that's not really part of the video. Um, there's different ways you can get rid of the locks. I think the easiest is just, just uh, build a TNT duper and drop down locks here on the side and blow everything up and then have a water collection system at the bottom. Um, I don't want to make a tutorial since we're still in the snapshots and there's also still some bugs with that. So one of those bugs yeah, is related to the obsidian block here, so we're having an issue there. And here we have the problem. The tree generation is still buggy in the snapshots. So the way it's working right now is that the locks would generate first and then the nether wart blocks and the vines. And those wart blocks and vines and shroom lights could actually also replace the locks. So the tree I just generated looks like this. No stem in front of the dispenser, just a vine block. And this actually breaks the detection system using the comparator because there's now no full block in between comparator and dispenser so we couldn't detect the tree has grown and the farm would stop. One way to fix this is uh, kind of sacrifice the second block here, place down a non-movable block 
and now this can't be replaced. Using a different detection system, unfortunately, also it's not a solution. I was hoping that the lock that generates first and gets replaced later could for a moment change the block state of a wall and an observer could pick that up. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. So the vine could still generate here in front and the wall would never change for the observer. Another thing that could actually happen that would mess with the farm a little bit is the nylium turning into netherrack. So similar to grass blocks turning into dirt if you place some blocks above, nylium can actually convert to netherrack and then need to convert it back because if you will, will try to bone meal the, the netherrack obviously you can't grow a fungus. But that's kind of nice, we could actually use the same dispenser that bone meals the nylium to bone meal the netherrack. Uh, in case you have a second nylium block here, so we got here one diagonal, it will be converted back into netherrack. But this is basically just uh, the same as nothing growing, so the whole circuit will be unaffected by this. Just miss a cycle, um, but it's perfectly fine. Another way to get, actually get rid of this issue is to stand 140 blocks away from this contraption. Uh, then you don't get any random ticks near the machine, then it can't be converted into netherrack. So if you would build a machine like this at the spawn chunks, for example, they could automatically generate locks while you're not there, um, in case you bra break them as well. This could be quite useful for more sophisticated farms. So actually, I was planning to make a uh, yeah, more sophisticated farm that would also break a lot of those warped wart blocks there in order to compost this as well and bone mill them and then completely run this machine uh, yeah, autonomous. So you don't need to have any external bone mill storage. You could just reuse the warp blocks as well. But I ran into a few smaller issues with the tree generation and wanted to take a step back and try a simple farm first to see yeah, what, what else could go wrong and we also ran into yeah, some issues. Probably was a good decision to not start with the most uh, complicated farm first. Okay, here would be the bone storage. It actually supplies both dispensers. All right, so in case nothing gets changed about the tree farm here, I will probably make a tutorial and also include a TNT blast chamber once 1.16 is released. Um, in case there are some changes to it, if there's weird uh, vine generation that could replace logs, um, then we can also adjust it slightly and I will make an updated version. But that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.